Shalom, Hebrew friends. Welcome to Explore Hebrew Level 2. This is Lesson 11, the third lesson in Level 2, and I am Melissa Briggs, your Hebrew teacher. Let's get started with our lesson for today. In Hebrew, there's a very handy way to say there is or there are, and it's so handy because we don't have to conjugate it or change it at all based on whether we're talking about something masculine or plural or feminine or whatever. This little word, yesh, yesh, means there is or there are. So if I wanted to say there is a banana, yesh banana, or there is a lemon, yesh limon. And the opposite of yesh is a little word, ain, that means there is not or there are not. Ain banana. There is not a banana. Or if we just change the intonation of these sentences, then it becomes like a question. So, ain banana? Isn't there a banana? Or, yesh banana? Is there a banana? Kind of two ways of asking the same thing. But, yesh and ain, super useful. And again, these are, are different, but kind of similar to the words for yes or no. Ken means yes and lo means no. And that might be the answer that you get. If you ask somebody, yesh banana, they might either say, ken, yesh banana, or lo, ain banana. No, there's not a banana. If I wanted to say, not that there is something, but that I have something, the way to do that in Hebrew uses these little words, yesh or ain. And it uses them in combination with a preposition, le, which means two or four. And then we put a little inflection on the end of the lay to say who we're talking about. If we want to say to me, we say li, like it says on the screen here. And we actually saw another variation of this in our memorization verse, Elohim lanu. Lanu means to us. Li means to me. Remember in the verse it said, God is to us. Elohim lanu. If I wanted to say God is to me, I'd say Elohim li. So it sounds clunky in English, but the Hebrew way to talk about possession is there is to me a house, for example, or there is to me a dog, or there is to me a son. Yesh li bait. There is to me a house. And when we Translate it into English, we don't say there is to me a house. We put it into the correct way that in English we talk about possession, which is with the verb have or has. I have a house. Yeshli bait. Yeshli banana. I have a banana. Yeshli ach. I have a brother. Now the opposite of yeshli is ainly, because the opposite of yesh is ain. If I want to say, I do not have a brother, or I do not have a flat, or I do not have a dog, I would say, ain li, which literally means there is not to me, and then the thing that we're talking about. So, ain li bite is, I don't have a house. Or, if I want to say, I don't have a flat, as it's written here, ain li dira. Or, I don't have a dog, ain li kelev. We're going to talk more about this next week, but for now, I just want you to refresh yourselves with yesh and ain and what they mean, and then add to it this information that we can talk about what we possess with yesh li, I have a chot, I have a sister, yesh li a chot, or you might say, I do not have a sister, ain li a chot. So let's try that with some of these nouns that we learned last week. How would I say, I do not have uncles? I do not have uncles. Ain li dodim. I do not have uncles. Ain li dodim. But if I wanted to say, I do have uncles, yesh li dodim. What if I wanted to say, I have an aunt. Yesh li doda. Yesh li doda. I have an aunt. There is to me an aunt. Yesh li doda. What if you wanted to say, I do not have an aunt? 
אין לי דודה, אין לי דודה. What about sister? Do you remember how to pronounce the word for sister? אחות. How would you say, I do not have a sister? אין לי אחות. I do not have a sister. אין לי אחות. What if I want to say, I do have a brother? I have a brother. Remember, we need to literally say, there is, to me, a brother. יש לי אח. יש לי אח. There is, to me, a brother. יש לי אח. What if I wanted to say, I have a father? This is actually a picture of my wonderful dad and I on my wedding day. I wanted to say, I have a father. יש לי אבא. And of course, you can make the sentence more complex. If I wanted to say, I have a good father, I would say, יש לי אבא טוב. Remember in Hebrew, we put the adjective after the noun. יש לי אבא טוב. So I actually wanted to pause here on this word for a few minutes and talk to you about the biblical Hebrew word Abba and its beauty and its significance in the scriptures. I know that Father's Day evokes different emotions from different people. I am truly grateful to be the daughter of such a loving dad that I know not to take it for granted. As a foster parent, I have seen firsthand just how complicated some father relationships can be. Prison, neglect, abuse, addiction, abandonment for many people, including the precious children that have come under our care as foster parents. These are some of the words that come to mind about their dads. God and his wisdom gave us relatable metaphors to help us better understand him and his kingdom. Found over and over in the Bible, fatherhood is a primary picture for the type of relationship God desires to have with each of us. Every child and adult has an innate desire to be in right relationship with their own dad. When that's not possible, it is a painful reality. So it's no wonder that the enemy of our souls rages war on family and fatherhood, seeking to destroy, diminish, and redefine. He aims to break the metaphor in order to distort our view of God. Whole documentaries and sociological studies have been made in recent years about the detrimental effect on a child's life and society as a whole when fathers are absent, abusive, or neglectful. The word for father, av, is the more formal version of the famous word abba. Abba is a form of av, which is a term of endearment like daddy. Abraham's name, Avraham in Hebrew, meaning father of many nations, and his original name, Avram, meaning exalted father, they are both from this same root word system. In the Bible, a person's identity is wrapped up in who their father is. Biblically, having a father, an Av, represented belonging. It meant having a place and a home and a family. And Av also provided protection. He provided provision and inheritance for his children. Before last names were a cultural norm, you were labeled as a son of your father. Isaac, son of Abraham. Jacob, son of Isaac. Just look at the genealogies. This is a picture of how God wants our identity to be completely rooted in him. Like it says in the Bible, yet you, Lord, are our father, our Av. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. That's Isaiah 64, 8. Our dads are supposed to reflect the incredible father heart of God to us, showing a tangible taste of God's love, his strength, his security, his provision, his protection, his instruction, his discipline, and his tenderness. Bible teacher Derek Prince wrote about how a father has the opportunity to mirror the roles of priest, prophet, and king for his family. However, in our sinful world, perfection from an earthly father is impossible. Even the fathers in the Bible were imperfect. 
showing favoritism, or much worse. Nevertheless, no matter how any other parent or person behaves, our Father God is steady. He is a rock for us in every season, and God's merciful Father heart of forgiveness and acceptance is, of course, towards dads in their own brokenness and pain too. Galatians 4 says, But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God made you also an heir. So what if your dad was less than ideal? What if he was harsh or distant or hurt you or hit you? What if he died? What if he left you feeling insecure in his love, seemingly never able to win his approval, his affection, his attention? Are you just doomed to be left as damaged goods, unable to relate to God properly? Certainly not. In Psalm 27, David spoke of the Father God accepting those who are rejected or hurt by their parents. You, Lord, have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. If the powerful fatherhood metaphor could be so confused by human sin, then why would God risk using it? Maybe God chose this metaphor exactly because he knew that our human family relationships might be so complicated by sin, and he wanted to offer the solution that he offers himself to us as father. The message of Av is that there is healing and wholeness available to all who have been wounded by their human fathers and everyone else. Jesus makes it possible for us to know a father who loves us perfectly and will do us no harm. Jesus connects us to his father so we might be made whole emotionally, spiritually. When we open up our hearts to him, God also loves to restore human relationships too, as we read in Malachi 4, 6. In our training as foster parents, we were taught about the importance of providing a sense of felt safety for the children in our care. They explained that the difference between a child being safe versus a child feeling safe are different. A child may be safe with you, but unless they also feel safe, they will not trust you. They won't form a healthy relationship with you. As a foster carer or a parent, it's critical to make a secure attachment. The problems arising from insecure attachments are abundant, but if a child can learn the essential life skill of forming a secure attachment to a safe adult, a safe parent, then there is so much hope for them. This is exactly like what God wants to do for us too. He wants us to realize how safe, how secure we are in his care to learn to trust him because he is so trustworthy and we need to agree to a healthy attachment to him. He said, I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's 2 Corinthians 6.18. So many of our problems in this world stem from insecure attachments to our Heavenly Father, our Av. When we are willing to lay down all of our other lesser-than tactics for bringing a sense of security, worth, identity, or belovedness into our lives, and truly turn to Him for all of those things, then we can handle the challenges of life with so much more joy, resiliency, and shalom. Jesus knew exactly who he was in relation to the Father, and we can know too. I love the scripture. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Av, and you are in me, and I am in you. The one who loves me will be loved by my Av, and I too will love them and show myself to them. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. That gets a condensed version of John 14. A strong, healthy, loving, respectful relationship with a loving father is what every human heart longs for. And it is such good news that it is available freely through Jesus who makes it possible for us to be in right relationship with the father. I am so thankful for my Abba 
and my Ima. I'm so thankful to them that they've always pointed me towards my heavenly Av. So here I just wanted to review quickly the verb gar. And me gara de Tennessee might say of my dad, who gar be Tennessee, or my parents together, hem garim be Tennessee, or about my mom and myself, anachnu garot be Tennessee. So I wanted to give you another preposition that you could use with the verb gar. This is just a tiny word, but a powerful word. So let's read it together. We have ein, i, ma, im. This is the little preposition with pronounced im. And you're actually going to be familiar with this word, meaning with, im, from the beautiful title of God, name of God, meaning God with us, im, ma, nu, L. So here in this word, we have a mem with a dogish in it. When we see a dogish in a word that is not a bigod kafat letter and not a vav with a dot next to it, like we see later on in this word, we know for sure it's going to be a doubling dot, a dogish forte. So we need to make this m sound twice. So let's sound it out slowly. Im, ma, nu, el, Emmanuel which literally means with us God. He is the God that is the with us God, the God with us. 